Well, it's October 2023, and uh, there's been quite a lot of M&A activity this uh, this month. Two huge mega mergers, and uh, today we're going to have a look at them. So today we're going to look at the mega mergers of ExxonMobil with Pioneer Natural Resources, a $60 billion deal, and Chevron and Hess, only a mere $53 billion deal. We did think about calling this, uh, has been any news this month? There certainly has. So here are the press releases that were put out by the companies here. ExxonMobil, with their headline, uh, put out on the 11th of October, 2023. And then the uh, the Chevron headline put out on the 23rd of October, just 12 days apart. So we don't want to get bogged down in the legalities here of whether they're proposed transactions or definitive agreements. But uh, taking a look at each in turn, you can see the ExxonMobil Pioneer, an all stock transaction value, $59.5 billion or $253 per share. Pioneer shareholders are going to receive 2.3234 shares of ExxonMobil for each Pioneer share. Total enterprise value, which includes net debt, $64.5 billion. The Chevron Hess deal, well, that's again an all stock transaction and valued at $53 billion or $171 per share. Now, Hess shareholders will receive 1.025 shares of Chevron for each Hess share and the total enterprise value, including net debt, $60 billion. I sat through a webinar recently by the, the very excellent uh, Rystad Energy, and they presented this chart here. It was looking at the top performers, the top companies generating value through exploration activity between 2018 and 2022. And lo and behold, look who's at the top of the list. We've got Hess at the top, and of course, they're involved with the Chevron deal and ExxonMobil in second place, and they're involved in the Pioneer deal. So some great results uh, in recent times for both the companies involved in these mergers. Now, very often in these transactions, there is what's called a, a merge or an emergee, somebody who uh, basically is taking over the other one. I think it's fairly clear in, in both these cases. Now, if we look at the first deal, here's uh, Pioneer based in Irving and uh, ExxonMobil, who are headquartered here at Spring, just uh, north of uh, Houston. So not too far apart. Whereas uh, for the Chevron Hess deal, well, you know, one headquartered in San Ramon in California, the other one, New York City, New York. Quite a distance apart, but I don't think it really matters because ultimately most companies have a presence in either Dallas or in this case here, these are the Chevron and Hess buildings in downtown Houston. So let's take a closer look at the ExxonMobil and Pioneer deal. The map on the top left, uh, we can clearly see the Permian Basin and the Permian Basin is actually, it's two basins, the Delaware to the west and the Midland Basin here to the east. And we can see in red are the uh, ExxonMobil, uh, the acreage position in both basins, but uh, certainly the green of Pioneer dominating in the Midland Basin. Obvious synergies when these two come together. Now, Pioneer have nearly 850,000 net acres, um, whereas ExxonMobil 570,000. But together, you can see in the Delaware and Midland, and this is a map just showing the location of it here, mainly in Texas, but a little bit uh, creeping across there into New Mexico. Now, it creates the industry's leading high-quality, undeveloped U.S. unconventional inventory position. That's quite a mouthful, and that's what you get from the press release. But no, I think it's absolutely right. There's fantastic potential here. They claim a combined 16 billion barrels of oil equivalent as a resource within the Permian. Obviously, they aren't reserves, but there's a huge amount that, that can be developed over the coming years and decades. In 2023, the combined entity would be about 1.3 million barrels of oil equivalent per day. And uh, they're anticipating that that could go as high as about 2 million barrels of oil equivalent per day by 2027. Now, great for the uh, US energy security. It's going to combine the technologies of both corporations, operational excellence and uh, financial capability. Another two wins coming out of this deal. If we look at this from the very excellent uh, Novi Labs, you can see who's drilling long laterals. So this is in the Permian. And you can see there's Pioneer up in first place and uh, ExxonMobil in third place. So the combined entity are going to be way ahead of everybody else in terms of the number of long laterals. That's greater than 14,000 feet of step out. It's an am amazing achievement. So meet the new boss for uh, ExxonMobil, of course, Darren Woods, chairman and CEO. 
Pioneers, uh, Scott Sheffield, will he be involved going forward? I haven't seen anything on that, but I'm sure these guys have been getting to know each other very well in the last few weeks and months. Well, what are the transaction benefits from combining the inventories within the Permian Basin? Expect to generate greater than 10% returns, you know, higher recovery factors, greater efficiency and lower environmental impact. It's obviously great for capital efficiency and cost performance and should lead to a significantly increased production. Best in class, greater than four mile lateral wells. It's going to be fewer wells with a smaller surface footprint and the two combined. It's certainly going to lower the carbon footprint. It lowers ExxonMobil's cost of supply for production. Pioneer's assets coming in at uh, less than $35 a barrel. Now, in terms of bang for the buck, the merger is anticipated to be accretive from day one. Highly accretive mid to long term to ExxonMobil earnings per share. Now, not only that, but there is the benefit of uh, it can actually accelerate the net zero plans for the combined company. Exxon plans to achieve net zero scope one and scope two greenhouse gas emissions reduction by 2030. Pioneers uh, plan moving it forward 15 years to, to 2035. The combined operating capabilities and the infrastructure should see the reduction in the recycled water use in the Permian uh, fracture operations by more than 90% by 2030. In the details of the transaction, well, about an 18% premium to Pioneer's shares, 9% premium to its 30-day average. Both boards of directors have unanimously approved the transaction. The deal subject to customary regulatory reviews and approvals also subject to the approval by Pioneer shareholders. It's expected that this transaction should close by uh, second half 2024. So now let's take a look at the Chevron and Hess deal. In terms of the major assets in this deal, we look no further than the Starbrook block over in Guyana, or offshore Guyana. Hess have a 30% stake in the block and uh, there's over 11 billion barrels of oil equivalent proven reserves to date. And that number is just going one way. High cash margins and low carbon intensity there's room for great production growth and expiration upside potential. Hess has also got uh, 465,000 net acres in the Bakken, and we'll have a look at that in a second, which adds to Chevron's uh, denver Yulesburg and Permian Basin plays. Now, they also complement each other in the Gulf of Mexico, and also there is uh, an opportunity to expand in Southeast Asia with uh, the natural gas business over there. It's expected to be accretive to cash flow per share in 2025. And synergies and first oil from the fourth FBSO in Guyana is due later this year. It increases Chevron's five-year production and free cash flow growth rates. Now, bang for the buck, the combined company's capital expenditure budget will be of the order of 19 to $22 billion. That's a huge war chest. Expects to increase asset sales and the run rate cost synergies $1 billion before tax within a year of closing. That's what they're predicting. This deal is expected to close in the first half of 2024. Now let's just have a look at some of the assets. We'll have a look at Hess's Guyana Jewel. This is, of course, they share it with ExxonMobil is the operator within this. And Hess are a 30% partner, uh, along with the Chinese National Oil Corporation. Now it's the Starbrook block here, highlighted in yellow on this map on the left here. There's a small inset map here showing this is the coast of uh, Guyana. And this is the location here of the Starbrook block. You can see that uh, there have been major new discoveries. The, the most recent one here is at Lancet Fish. That's just come out a few days after the deal was announced. It's really just breaking. We haven't got many details for that yet. A Prosperity FPSO, which is this FPSO here, it's now in country. It's going to be a 41 well development and Prosperity will actually capture oil from the Payara and Pecora accumulations. And it's expected first oil by late 2023. So another production boost there. Whiptail and Yuaru uh, FID is, is imminent. And uh, watch this space. We've recently put out a, uh, a Trove News update for this entire Guyana Suriname region. And I'm sure it won't be long before we have another one out. So subscribe and watch the channel. In terms of the Barkan, and here's the location of the Barkan here, right up on the border with Canada. And this is uh, Hess's position. Now, as well as having a, an extensive acreage position, Pause the video and have a look at some of the other assets that they have within this region. And if we look at the DJ Basin, well, this was uh, a map relevant to a deal that was done earlier in the year, uh, back in May 2023. 
And this was when Chevron and PDC Energy merged. Uh, and you can see that the combined acreage position for the, the new company is absolutely massive. This was a deal that cost $6.3 billion, and it added about uh, $1 billion of annual free cash flow and a billion barrels of oil equivalent proved reserves. So let's meet the new bosses here. Well, for Chevron, of course, it's chairman and CEO Mike Worth and a TESS CEO, John Hess, expected to take a position on the board of Chevron. Sorry about that, but uh, it looks like Mike enjoyed the joke anyway. So if we try and have a look at uh, Chevron's global operations, well, it's difficult to actually uh, see them all because uh, in, on the website here, they have maps for all of these regions. I've just taken half a dozen of those and put them up here. Pause the video and have a look and you can see some of the areas that Chevron are involved. It really is a global company. Chevron is enormous worldwide. Whether you're looking at a new country entry, at some mergers and acquisitions or an acquisition and a divestment, one of the ways that you can quickly and efficiently get an evaluation of an entire portfolio is to use Trove. And here's how. So using Trove, we can very, very quickly come up with a combined list of all the assets. And here's the US offshore, Gulf of Mexico and quickly extract all the assets in and around the area, including fields, developments, even some occasional dry holes where we've got some great geological information. You can see where the licenses are, the areas, when they were discovered. Equally, you can just see at the click of a button all the information that you've got on the HESS-operated stampede asset. Uh, you can see seismic lines, descriptions, geology cross-sections, geoseismic basin settings, write-ups on the project, write-ups on the production, and all this information available for every single field throughout the entire basin. So I know you're thinking, oh, I wish we could do this and really, really quickly go around and have a look at all the assets. I wish we had Trove. Well, if you work for Shell or Harbor Energy, you have got it. So please give us a call if you want to understand more about how to use it. And if you haven't got it, why not? And so in summary, we've looked at $113 billion worth of mergers today. These two huge corporations just getting bigger. The integration of these companies is going to be a massive challenge and it can take months and likely years before all the systems are combined and some of the synergies and some rationalizations. But there are huge opportunities and great uh, potential uh, for growth and for cost cutting, which leaves the obvious question, and this is based on nothing more than a vivid imagination. Who's next? Well, Add your favorite mega merger comments or speculation in the comments below. Thanks again for watching. Give us a thumbs up, subscribe to the channel, a lot more like this, and ring that bell if you want to know when we come out with a new video. There's the website, there's the email. So who do you think is going to be the next in line? Which merger? Put a comment below. Let's, uh, let's have a, a discussion about it. Um, of course, we may not have to wait too long and we'll know for sure. Anyway, thanks for watching the video. Hope to see you back on the channel before too long. Take care. Bye for now. Oh, remember, always embrace change. Nah.